Is this happening to you? then you're in the right place for video game training. In this video, I'm going to show you how to defeat Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. If you want to be an absolute legend and support the channel, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. My name is Azavar or Azza, now let's get into the video. I'll just show you where this boss is located. So he's located here at the base of the Erd tree. The closest site of grace will be the Queen's bedchamber. And I'll just show you the setup that we're using for this fight. So we have two keen scimitars plus 25. We've got a serpent's bow and we'll be using serpent's arrows to apply poison. We've got the golden beast crest shield and this has 100% physical damage negation. This also has the ash of war called barricade shield applied to it. We'll be using the finger sacred seal so we can use rotten breath and rotten breath applies scarlet rot. We're using the Crucible Knight's armor set. And for the talismans, we've got Arrow Sting Talisman, which raises the attacks of our arrows. Kindred of Rot's Talisman, which increases our attack if there's poison or scarlet rot in the area. Green Turtle Talisman, which raises stamina recovery speed. Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two, which vastly boosts physical damage negation. We've got 12 of the red flasks and two of the blue flasks. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we've got the Crimson Burst Crystal Tier and the Green Burst Crystal Tier. We might use some food buffs, for example, Exalted Flesh, which boosts our physical attack and Pickled Turtle Neck which boosts our stamina recovery speed and we'll also pop on some Fire Grease to do some extra damage. It's not really weak to any Grease like Magic, Fire or Lightning but you can pop those Greases on to do a little bit of extra damage although it does have a bit of resistance to Holy so we won't be using Holy Grease. We'll also pop some Starlight Shards at the start of the battle which gradually recover our FP and you could also use some Spirit Ash forward slash Spirit Summons. We'll be using Ancestral Follower Ashes plus 9. What you can do to make this fight a lot easier is actually save and quit instantly at the start of the battle, then load back into the game. And when you load back in, you'll be outside the fog gate. So this time, if we enter the arena, we've got absolutely loads of time to lock on and start shooting our poison arrows and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you two slight variants on how to deal with phase two. One is a bit more offensive and one is a bit more defensive. Okay, so let's jump into the fight. First of all, we'll pop these starlight shards. Then we'll jump into the arena, use our spirit ashes. Now we need to lock on. Try and land roughly about five poison arrows as the fight starts. So that should do. And then we'll switch to the sacred seal and we'll apply scarlet rot next. Pop that bad boy, get ready to block or dodge. You can also whip out the shield here, and block those attacks. So he's now got poison and scarlet rot applied to him. So we're going to use the flask, exalted flesh, switch to sword and shield, apply fire grease. Then you could play offensively or defensively here. So if you want to play offensively, go for double swords. Defensively, go for the great shield. Watch out for this fissure because it hurts a lot. You can jump over that foot stomp. Try and show you some of the guard counters here. And the stance break, so shield up. Gonna hold down right trigger there. Hit him with a charge attack. Try and show you some more guard counters. Shield up. Guard counter. And you can stance break him like so. This will push him into phase two. So at the start of phase two, usually you start a little bit closer to him, but sometimes for some reason it glitches out and puts you a bit further back. Uh, usually if he roars, he jumps up and goes into his Earth Shaker attack. Ideally what we want to do is apply Poison or Scarlet Rot to him. So I'm going to go ahead and use Rotten Breath and tank whatever hits he gives us. It's usually worth tanking whatever attack he does in exchange for applying Scarlet Rot, even if it means that he like power bombs you, like exactly like that. If you keep an eye on his health, it is ticking down. He's got the red aura around him, so that's basically what we want to achieve, is his health ticking down. And then all we have to do really for the rest of this is run around the arena. If he roars, he's going to jump up. You jump twice while it's running away. You could also, if you want to be cheeky, you can also try and apply poison to him again. For this one, you want to jump over it. And again, if he does that, it buffs his stomps. So he's got that kind of crazy aura around him. And uh, if he's got that crazy aura, 
it means that all of his stomps are going to be arena wide. So usually when he roars he goes into that earth shaker type move, uh, but it doesn't do it all the time. Other than that, basically you can just run around the arena like this. If you look at his health, um, it's basically on the way out, so you just do this. There's the roar, he's going to jump up, you jump once, jump twice, and then roll. Avoided Earthshaker. If you want to do some extra damage, you can shoot some arrows at him and potentially reapply poison. But other than that, that is the fight. Just going to show you an extra trick that you can do if you do stance break him. So I'm going to get in some charge attacks and some guard counters so he can stance break. That's two charge attacks. Guard counter. You can pop a flask like that and then you can also get in the critical strike afterwards. So keep that in mind if you need to pop an extra flask. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a bit more of an offensive type strategy with the double swords this time around. We've got the flask of wondrous physics still applied. Watch out for this fissure. And we've buffed up with the fire grease and stuff. If you're going to go in for double swords, then a lot of it is kind of just like jumping and rolling and dodging all the bits and bobs that he does. Jump over that foot stomp. Run in. Get the uh, double sword slicing away. So jump the foot stomp like that. It usually goes into a combo of sorts afterwards. You can punish there. Jump over. Watch out for the kind of like wind ups on a lot of his attacks. That fissure also does a hell of a lot of damage. So watch out for that. Jump over. And then at the start of phase two, run forward and kind of like around him. And you can attack him from behind. So basically, with this phase, one of the best things to do if you want to be up close and personal is just be kind of like behind him, but don't lock on. So just kind of like rolling around like that, attacking once or twice here and there. The roar will knock you down, so watch out for that. And uh, watch out for this Earth Shaker. If you're close, the Earth Shaker is quite difficult to uh, dodge. But yeah, just basically um, sort of like rolling around whilst being behind him usually works quite well. And the Double Swords physical damage does quite a lot of damage. You may take a hit like here and there. Just make sure to you know keep an eye on your health and uh, keep topping up accordingly. But other than that, just keep getting behind him, right behind his butt. Popping in your attacks here and there, watch out for the roar. Use that chance to heal up. The Earthshaker once again, if you're close like this, the Earthshaker is a bit spicy. But you can roll through it like that. Watch out for this one. Ideally for that, you kind of want to be rolling towards kind of like behind him or to the sides of him to avoid that. Like that. You might get grabbed by it here and there. Just keep on uh, behind him like so. And pop it in your attacks. That is one way to deal with him. But yeah, other than that, that is the fight. And hopefully that extra information helps.